Hello viewers, welcome back. Today we are going to focus on uh, the time complexity and space complexity with algorithms related to greedy strategy. So let us quickly get into the subject. And today we are going to focus on Huffman coding, shortest path we have the extra algorithm. Then for minimum cost spanning tree, we will be looking for Prim's algorithm and Kruskal's and little about the disjoint set. So today's uh, part is going to be only on how the time complexity and space complexity are being derived and how do we get into. So before getting into it, a brief introduction about greedy strategy. So the strategy we know that it is used for finding out the solution. So before this, we have seen exhaustive search. Exhaustive search is a method where all the possibilities are being taken and we try to pick out the best solution. That is the most optimal solution. So it takes a very, very, very long time for getting into the um, solution. Then the complexity also increases because we do all the possible search or we do everything. So it is going to be in exponential. It might be in a factorial n factorial or 2 to the power n or n to the power um, n or something like that. So it takes a very exhaustive way to get the solution. Just to overcome that, finding all the possibilities and then picking out the best solution, we have the greedy method or the greedy strategy fulfilling the criteria that is we are not going to search for the, all the possibilities but we are going to pick out the best solution possible. So how are we going to get into it is when a problem is being given. So three things have to be considered here in this greedy strategy. The first one is the path in which it's going. It ensures whether it is going to obtain the feasible solution. Feasible means is it the desirable solution? Is it going to get or not? Then the next one is among the desirable solution, is it the optimal solution so that is the second point so whether the optimal solution is obtained or not is being determined among the routes which are there and the third one is once a path is being determined or it decides this is going to be the way or this is going to be the route in which we are going to get the solution that solution or that path cannot be reversed that is it is not possible to revoke so irrevocable okay so the three conditions here in greedy method are feasible optimal and irrevocable okay so this is how it goes so ultimately how it is going to work is it is going to get the answer which is going to be giving the best solution at the first try itself we will try to get the solution as finding out the uh, change for a problem that is coins which are possibly giving the same sum or something like that we'll try to pick out the best combination of all the coins which are available to get the change for the coin so that is how we have this greedy strategy working so these are the different algorithms which are being or the problems which are specified in our curriculum for us to learn in depth about the greedy strategy. So let me just quickly tell you what this Huffman encoding. So this Huffman encoding is nothing but a method where we have the text or we have the frequency of occurrence of this characters and depending on the uh, frequency a code has been generated so this is going to be a dynamically generated code with respect to the frequency how frequent the character has been repeated in the text so if the character is being repeated the more then the size of the cipher text that is the coding is going to be small more the frequency less the size of the code if it is least repeated or the frequency is going to be very minimal the size of the code will also increase so how do we go about with this is all the frequencies are being given or the listing is being done then a tree structure with similar frequencies are being um, 
belt okay depending on the weight it has been categorized okay so the uh, when you just look into this uh, we have a structure like this so these elements which are on the top level will be of lesser frequency and the ones which are at the bottom will be of sorry no, the ones on top will be of more frequency and the ones at the bottom will be of a lesser weak frequency so when we go about by encoding so what happens here is the size of the code here will be just two whereas here when we go it will be like three or four or depending on the level so here we have the number of elements here and how much is the depth of the tree or the constructed uh, Huffman tree so based on that like since it's going to be divided into two sets and we are going to do the combinatory factor here we have the log factor so we have the complexity with respect to Huffman coding as big O n log k and the space complexity when you just look into there are n number of characters which are to be represented with respect to the frequency so we have it as big o of n so here the next algorithm where it is the dextrous algorithm so here it is going to find out the shortest path so how do we determine the shortest path from the source to the destination there might be many different uh, paths available or the nodes available the vertices which are there so here it is going to be the starting point and this is going to be our ending point so from here to here depending on the weight which are being given so which could be the shortest path travel we have to go about by assigning so how do we determine that we just check out which direction or which node is going to be of shorter distance and we keep connecting one after the other until we uh, go to the last point the ending point we start from the starting point the source and to the destination we keep connecting depending on which edge shows the minimum okay so there might be different routes available but still we are looking for the optimal solution and we are not going to get back to the previous node or anything we will be just looking out for the best solution so here the complexity factor is going to be with respect to the edge which are available and the log of the vertices whether it is going to be this or this which we are going to select and only that half we are going to traverse and get so the space is how many ever vertices are present here all these vertices are going to be represented so big o of v so when we have the minimum spanning tree so this is a graphical structure and it is going to be connected with many nodes here and it is going to be undirected and there are going to be weight also available for each and every connection which have been there so the structure of the graph here or the tree which we are going to put is going to be derived from the graph where there are going to be edges uh, which are going to be with weight and the vertices are going to be connected with each other without any direction that is it's going to be undirected graph and uh, with weight okay so what is our problem concern here is we have to construct a tree that is it's not going to be cyclic okay so tree means it's not going to be cyclic it's going to be an acyclic or it's going to be a tree structure from one part to another connecting all the nodes which have been there all the vertices have to be connected with each other but what is the criteria here is um, it should not be cyclic and it has to give us minimum cost okay the minimum has to be determined so how do we go about by picking it's something similar to this dextrous algorithm where we have we start from one point we just take one node or one vertex as such for determining which would be the most uh, neighboring node as such we will be considering that and if uh, like comparing like other like uh, all the possible routes which is the minimum of all we will try to 
go to or we place that particular uh, edge as the first solution and from there all the possible roots as such like two nodes which have been connected we will be taking the minimum and we will be jumping on to the next so the criteria here is all the nodes or the vertices which are being present have to be connected so till all the nodes are being connected without a cyclic change we keep connecting them one after the other so here what is the complexity we find it that since it has to compare everything and it has to go about and everything so we have the vertex itself like it has to double check again and again so it is going to be v square and the space complexity when since all the vertices are being present so it is big o of v so in the case of cruise curves, just an improvement of this Prim's algorithm, what we do is here we arrange all the edges in ascending order. From the smallest to the biggest we go about by arranging. So how do we go? So the first least value will be replaced, then the next will be replaced and everything we will try to connect all the nodes. If it is going to be cyclic, if it's going to form a cycle, then we will be omitting that particular edge and we will move on to the next least and we'll just go to the higher order till we get a condition that all the vertices are being connected with each other without a cyclic structure. So without a cyclic structure, find, um, it's the spanning tree. So our thing here is to find the minimum cost by uh, having the spanning tree. So since here it is the edges which are being determined and you have the selection of the vertices which are being done uh, with based on like what is available and only if the least cost is being taken only that particular vertex you go about and everything and the other things you just neglect so you have it as the E log V as the time complexity. Since all the vertices have been present, you have the time complexity as big O of V. So now uh, this disjoint sets. So this is a concept. This is not going to be an algorithm or anything like that. We have to know like what is this concept where how this um, incorporation of all these operations are going to happen. So here it's going to be a set Okay, this set is going to have the find and the union operations which are going to take place. So set, it is like all independent vertices which are being listed here. Okay, so we have like many available and you have the um, direction which are being given and you don't know which node is connected with what and everything. So this set is uh, then um, a procedure with the next find operation so it finds out all the possible um, combinations from one like where it has been connected to where it has been connected and everything all these connections are being determined then when you have to combine everything together it is the union operation which takes place so union operation what happens so now we have like many nodes here which are being there and some sort of a connection which are being given. So if these two are connected, then it just goes about by combining. So if there is going to be a combination here, then it just goes about. So here if there is going to be here, here and we just can go combine it. That is the union operation is going to combine. Okay. So here this is a concept where there are set of many nodes okay if they are the vertices which are present and the connection between them are being found out and later on the union between the uh, found out nodes are being done in order to combine all the sets which are available so this concept can be incorporated here as a concept for cruise case or prims or dextras for uniting all these elements or, or nodes and just getting about with so here what is the factor is you have it as big o of all the nodes are being given as n and here the finding factor is being given by m okay the combinations which are being found out with respect to the node okay so here uh, if the node which we have found out 
like with what we are going to combine it's not going to be the entire set only a part of it it's going to be compared with so we have the log n here okay so since uh, since all the nodes is going to be a bigger set and here this m log n is comparatively a smaller value so we can conclude that the time complexity for this is big o of n okay so here that space taken is going to be since all the nodes are to be placed here we have it as big o of n okay so this is all about the different algorithms which are being listed out in the curriculum for understanding this greedy strategy so here we have the feasible solution is being got through putting it in a proper order so that the minimum is being got or the maximum code size is being determined here we go about the to find out the shortest path by taking out the feasible or the optimal solution which is the minimum which is the minimum which is the minimum to well till we get the, to the last point here prims algorithm also is the same thing but it's not the path it is connecting all the nodes which are available here cross curves also it is connecting all the nodes which are available for finding out the minimum cost spanning tree so to reduce the complexity with compared to prims algorithm in cross curves we pick out the minimum value edges and we try to place and leaving out the condition if it is going to be a cyclic uh, structure then we don't consider that particular edge and we just go skip and find out the minimum spanning tree whereas this concept of disjoint set it is going to be all the nodes which are available the sets which are going to be there and we are going to find out which two nodes are going to be connected and we are going to combine all these connected nodes in order to get a structure of a graph okay so here these are the time complexity and the space complexity so hope you have understood the concept of greedy and the algorithms under them and hope you can manage with the time and space complexity so happy learning if you have not subscribed please subscribe and if you like our video please do like it and if you can uh, recommend it to your friends please do happy learning